Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Kendall Lake Winter. The photograph on the right was my reference and inspiration for this painting. After spending some time looking at the photograph, I decided there were three areas that I wanted to make some changes in to improve my composition. I'm going to take a closer look at the photograph to illustrate the three areas uh, that I don't particularly care for in the composition of the photograph. One on the right side here is this tree which gets cut off by the edge and that's a very bad tangent so that's something that I want to uh, improve on. Also this sapling that's growing off the shore, while I like the positioning of it, the direction of the, the branches takes you right off the page. So I want to see if I can improve on that. And then if you go to the left side of uh, the composition, the ground cover here is like a path that's been uh, worn down. It's just a bunch of smashed wet leaves and mud. And I don't particularly care for that. I don't think that's how I want to represent it in my interpretation of this scene. So I'm going to change the color here of my line and I'm going to show you what modifications I'm going to make. This tree, I'm just going to eliminate it completely. The other option for, for uh, the composition would be to move it inside the edge and leave some space between it and the edge to uh, eliminate the tangent, but I'm going to get rid of it completely. And if I move over here to this sapling, I'm going to uh, leave it there, but I'm going to change the direction of the branches so that it leads you more into the composition rather than off the page. And then the third area to the left, I'm instead of leaving this as wet leaves and mud, I'm just going to leave this whole area of, of the ground cover covered with snow. And um, so those are three modifications that I'm going to make in my interpretation of this scene to improve my composition. This is the light sketch that I've done with a 2B pencil. I've simply sketched the major shapes and indicated some of the direction of a few of the branches. I'm working on a quarter sheet, 11 inches by 15 inches, a 140 pound cold press Lanaquero watercolor paper. Before I begin to paint, I've made the decision I'm going to do some masking to preserve the white of the paper. In particular, I want to preserve a few of the areas that are snow covered and uh, this will allow me to apply a large fluid wash across my page and preserve the, uh, the pure white of the paper for some of these larger shapes that uh, are snow covered. Since the shapes that I want to mask are larger shapes, I'm going to use a, a frisket instead of liquid masking fluid. Uh, when you use a liquid masking fluid over a large area you don't get necessarily get the best coverage and it sometimes it affects the paper and makes it buckle so I'm going to use a frisket and by that I mean a sheet of protectant film in uh, over the surface that I will cut to the shape that I want to, to uh, preserve and in and, and my the, this application, I'm actually using clear packing tape, which is a technique I've used in several of my videos, rather than the uh, commercial frisket paper that you buy, which is quite expensive. This is an economic solution. So I apply the clear packing tape down, and then I take a sharp knife and I gently cut the tape, and then I lift the tape from the areas that uh, will be unprotected and leave the tape uh, on the areas that I want to protect. I've used this technique in several of my videos and if you're not familiar with it and want to learn more I've inserted a link here to a video where I explain uh, this technique for masking. I've cut around several shapes that I want to protect and I'm cutting along the the edge or the bank here that's going to be snow covered. I'm going to leave that area masked off as I apply my uh, larger fluid wash and once I'm done it'll leave this area protected and I'll just have the pure white of the paper. Now that I've cut around all the shapes that I want to protect I'll take the edge of my knife 
to get underneath the tape and I'll lift off the masking from the areas that I want exposed. At this point, I've removed the uh, tape from the areas that I don't want to protect. And now I'm going to do some additional masking using liquid masking fluid. Uh, the bottle that I'm using is a bottle that I filled myself. You can buy the commercially uh, uh, available masking fluid pens for this. And I've started to use these uh, quilling bottles. They're used to hold glue. They have a nice fine tip on them and I fill them myself and it's a much more economical solution uh, than using the commercially available masking fluid pens I find. So I'm using this to put on these uh, branches to give the indication of snow line on the branch and I'm going to take these and I'm just going to make the, the, the suggestion of a, a number of twigs and branches in this area uh, in the upper part of the trees. Now I'm going to uh, take the same approach to some of the uh, twigs and grassy shapes that are coming off the, uh, the, the bank here along the lake. This is very much in, in the, the planning stages of your painting and too often people overlook this um, part of the process. They want to start putting paint on paper, get a drawing and put on paper, paint on paper, but it's very helpful to think about your approach to your overall painting. Not necessarily that you're going to use masking fluid because there's some paintings you will, some paintings you won't, but you still have to go through that mental exercise of thinking where your lights are going to be, where the white of the paper is that you need to preserve. And you might preserve that by using masking or just painting around it. But you have to have some uh, advanced thinking up front uh, to, to have a, of a game plan on how you're going to approach this painting. Where are your lightest lights going to be and where are you going to build your darks and where is there overlap that you can just paint on top of your washes and it won't matter so you don't necessarily have to paint around. Those are some of the things that you, you can think about early in your process um, and that that early stage of planning will pay off in the long run and, and uh, you'll have a lot less frustration. Next I'm going to take a toothbrush and some liquid masking fluid and I'm going to uh, splatter some of it on my page. I like to do this in winter scenes. It gives a nice effect of, of snow falling or snow falling on branches and twigs. But in this application I'm also interested in preserving some areas here uh, where in the scene there's some leaves that are dried and hanging on these trees and they're uh, kind of a nice rich orange tone and by applying this splatter I'll be able to apply my washes early on in my process and then later on I can remove this and it'll have some some nice kind of uh, leafy shapes but that'll be the white of the paper and I can come back in with a nice rich sienna tone and paint those areas and there'll be a, a, be a pure uh, color than it would if I was trying to paint over top of a say a cool wash Sometimes what I'll do after I've splattered the masking fluid, I'll take this rubber tip shaping tool and I'll just drag some of that masking fluid to change the shape so it looks less like a dot of, of splattered uh, masking fluid and a little bit more like a, a leafy shape or a, a grouping of leaves. So I'm done with all my masking and all the liquid mask is thoroughly dry. So there was a lot of planning and preparation that went into this painting before I even thought about putting brush to paper. I have a one inch wash brush. This is a silver black velvet wash brush I like to use. And I'm using a mixture of cerulean blue with just a little bit of raw sienna in it. So it doesn't have much, just a little bit. So it's, it's still very much leaning towards the cerulean uh, blue in the mixture that ratio. And now I've added a little bit more raw sienna as I've gone down into the water. So I'm uh, trying to make it a little bit uh, more neutral as it goes into the water 
and I'm going to darken that up a little bit as I come closer to the foreground. So because I've uh, done a lot of masking in here in the preparation, I can apply this large wash without uh, concern for having to paint around shapes around the, the edge of, say, the, the bank of the lake here. And uh, when I'm done, once this is dry and eventually remove this masking, I'll have uh, some nice clean white shapes here that I can work with for my areas of snow but it's allowed me to be uh, very loose and apply a nice consistent overall wash in the sky and in the water. And you can see what a clean edge is maintained there at the bottom uh, by that tape. I've taken some more raw sienna and put into this uh, wet, so I'm, I'm working wet on wet. I can uh, come back into this without worrying about blossoms or anything because the paper is quite saturated at this point. But I wanted to make that a little bit more neutral uh, so I added some more raw sienna to that mixture. Again it's a mixture of cerulean blue and raw sienna. And you do have to be careful of these droplets that get on the plastic on the packing tape and around the edge of your paper on the board because they'll uh, if, if you're not careful once you've dried it and if you overlook those sometimes you'll drag those into your painting in an unwanted area and it's going to give you uh, a mark uh, that you really don't want. So I've thoroughly dried my paper at this point and now I'm going to take a mixture uh, that has some raw umber and some raw sienna and a little bit of royal blue in it and I'm going to take those colors in combination and also add some burnt sienna to the mixture to give the suggestion of this distant tree line. I'm painting this tree line not as a bunch of individual little painted trees but as one large shape and the, the t colors that I'm using are a combination of warm and cool. Well, they're leaning very much towards the warm side at the moment, but uh, I'm going to mix in some, some cooler tones too as I add more royal blue to the mixture. So here's a cooler tone that I'm putting down. And I'm using a uh, round wash brush, a jumbo round small is the size. And it's again a silver black velvet brush I like to use for washes. So now I'm taking a fine mist spray that I like to use. And I'm softening the edges of that, that tree line. And here again I want to pick up that excess water that's gathered right there at the where the tape is. If I don't, that's going to start to backwash and create a lot of undesirable uh, marks and, and, and effects into the I don't have blossoms into my tree line there that I don't really want although a few in that and something like that doesn't really hurt too much but um, just need to be aware of your moisture that's in your paper and where any excess is to make sure you keep it cleaned up I'm going to continue with the same mixture over to the left side of my painting here and this is the area in between the trees and because I have these areas masked, the tree shapes and the, the, some of the branches, I can be very liberal in my application of the wash. This is still the burnt sienna, raw sienna and raw umber mixture with some royal blue in there. Now I've thoroughly dried my paper once again with a hair dryer and I'm going to begin to work uh, given the suggestion of that, that tree line and that landmass reflecting down into the water. The area that I uh, masked with the, the packing tape is the area of snow but you can see there's a, a line in the middle of it that's the shoreline so some of that snow will reflect down in the water and I masked both areas initially when I put down my tape. So here I'm applying clear water and uh, I've intentionally left a few breaks uh, 
in the area I'm painting so that there's a, a separation suggesting some reflection in the water. But I'm taking those same colors that I use in the, in the tree line and I'm carrying them down into this, this water, this, this area where I've wet the paper. So I'm working wet and wet so it's giving me soft edges. And uh, I'm trying to pick up the tones that are in the uh, tree line that I've, I painted previously. Because I've applied the masking fluid in the manner that I did, I can uh, apply this wash as, as uh, just a nice even flowing wash without having to paint around shapes. So uh, it, it gives a suggestion of that, that continuation of this tone. In the end there will be some lighter shapes on top of it. But I'm able to work this manner in this manner because I decided to mask some of this initially. This is just one way to approach this. You can paint the same painting uh, without any masking fluid at all. It'll have a, a slightly different result, but um, there, there's many ways you can approach a, a painting, and this is just one of them. So I want to put some darker values in a few areas. And I've carried that tone over to the left here in this shoreline, and it's overlapped by some of these leafy shapes where I've masked. Next, I'm going to take a liner brush and I'm just going to suggest the trunks of some trees here in a distance. I'm not trying to paint a hundred tree trunks because there are a hundred tree trunks out there. I'm just making some marks to give some indications. Some are lighter than others. And I want to try and vary the length. Uh, I don't want to make them all continuous lines. I'm going to break them up and with different segments just so there's some variation in those. And also, here and there, I'm going to change the angle a little bit, but most of them are pretty vertical. Here I've moved to the left some. I'm making some more uh, uh, tree trunks here, giving the indication of these tree trunks. So I've skipped some areas where um, some areas, the, the shapes, the linear marks are a little more pronounced than others. Other areas I really don't even have any. And that's just kind of how things appear in the distance and I'm I, again I'm trying to suggest I'm not rendering every tree I'm almost creating a pattern back here that just gives a suggestion that there's a tree line with it's a wooded area but you can't make out every tree trunk the other thing I want to do is take those uh, linear uh, those values down into the water to give the suggestion that those are reflecting into the water. And as I come further to the left here, uh, this particular area has several re uh, reflection of several trees um, that are coming almost into the foreground because this, this uh, little piece of land is in the middle ground here. So I'm picking up some of those, the reflection of some of those tree shapes that I haven't even painted yet in that middle ground. But I've, I've sketched them in and I've, so I, I know where they're gonna be. So I've painted some of those reflections in the water. I'm gonna insert the photograph in the lower left corner there as I take my liner brush and give the suggestion of these saplings coming off the shore. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is an area where I've changed my composition. On the left, if you look at the photo, you can see those uh, saplings are leading you off the page. And I've made the adjustment here, and I'm taking them so that they're directionally, they're leading the viewer back into the composition. And uh, earlier, I used the masking fluid pen to make some of these marks. And some of these dark marks that I'm making right now, these dark value marks, are running right alongside the areas that I masked uh, initially when I began to, to uh, prepare for the painting. I'm going to make some uh, dark valued linear marks along the edge here just to give the suggestion of this kind of dried grass twig uh, 
feeling that's that's along the bank and again because I've put clear packing tape right on the edge of that bank it uh, the the marks I made start right exactly at the edge there's really not a, sp a space now I'm taking that value up into the trees and uh, doing similar brushwork where I'm taking a darker value and I'm placing it alongside where I've masked that'll give the uh, uh, suggestion that there's snow laying on top of this branch. So this uh, brushwork I'm doing right now I'm, I'm doing with a liner brush. Uh, I have this one listed on my website. I have two. One is a little larger than the other. This is the, the smaller one so it's a, a thinner line uh, produced by the brush. And the, va the, the mixture I'm using is a dark value mixture of the raw umber with some royal blue and a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in. Now I've reached a point where to continue I need to remove the uh, plastic tape that I had put down. So I'll take the edge of my knife and I'll uh, put it under the edge of that tape and lift it and start to, to peel it off. And you don't notice a big change just because uh, with a clear tape, it, it stays the pure white of the paper as you paint. Um, so as I remove this, you really won't notice any difference. It's just that the, the area will no longer be protected. Now that I've removed the uh, tape, I can begin to paint in these other areas which have been protected to this point. So I'm going to start painting these trees. And this is a mixture of royal blue and raw sienna and at times I'll mix in just a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm using a half inch uh, flat brush and you can see that I'm varying the ratio of uh, the pigments that I have in my mixture to take them from warm to cool so uh, the brush marks I'm making right now are rather cool because the mixture is leaning more towards the royal blue. And here I've added a bit more uh, raw sienna to the mixture so it's a little bit warmer. As I apply this I'm intentionally just trying to leave a few uh, areas of white just to give the suggestion of uh, some snow uh, catching on the bark and, and, it, and adhering to areas of the tree. Here I'm coming back in. I'm working wet and wet and I've got uh, a little bit darker uh, mixture of uh, the paint and still leaning towards the cool side. I'm taking some more of the same mixture and the same brush and I'm going to start to paint some of these uh, tree trunks here that are a little further back. You can see that the mixture I'm applying now is the is the ratio or is the mixture that leans towards the, the cool side and then I've added some with a warmer tone. Just a little darker value on the back side. And I'm going to take some the same mixture and I'm going to paint these other uh, tree shapes. As I paint these, you can see that I'm not uh, overworking the, the tree. I'm just taking a wash and I'm taking my brush, this flat brush, and I'm just bringing it down that vertical shape. But I'm not trying to necessarily render the, uh, the bark on the tree. And here you can see that I've got some broken edge as I came, came down the tree, which uh, helps suggest that there's some snow sticking to the bark. Now I've got a, a much darker value and I'm painting the uh, trunks of a few of these trees that are further back and I'm using just a uh, general purpose brush. Uh, it's a sable 
it's uh, a number six Escoda sable brush that I'm using and the 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 value on these trees I, is much darker than what I've painted here in the foreground and that helps build depth into the painting by having that shift of value between the foreground the middle ground and the difference between that and what's going on in the background which is lighter and I want to pick up some of that darker value into the reflection of the water. I'm going to paint a few of these branches. I get the same value as when I just painted the tree trunks back there to help establish their placement in the, as far as foreground, middle ground, and background. Next, I'm going to paint the, this shape that's here in the lower right hand corner. It's a, like a rock or a piece of a tree that's breaking through the snow. So I want to give that indication. So I'm just taking a medium dark value there to paint that. And uh, I want to lighten that up just a little bit because I want it to feel more in line with what's going on in the foreground as far as value. So I'm just going to blot that with a tissue. Next, I want to define a little bit more what's going on with the, the edge of the uh, shoreline there. So I'm just making a few small brush marks to give the indication that there's the, the edge of the, the land where it meets the, the water. And here, on the, in the, the distance here, put a little bit of a darker value just to suggest it's picking up uh, what's going on on the lower part of the, the land there. And keep in mind that what I have right there, that darker value, is actually on top of another reflection, which is the lighter uh, valued area, which is pure white paper right now, but what will be the reflection of the snow, which is on, on the immediate edge of the bank. So now I'm just giving indication that there's a bank there on the edge uh, where it meets the water and I'm going to need the tone the, the pure white tone that's there in the, the reflection area of the water so that it looks more like a reflection so I'm just taking a, a light neutral value there and putting a, a small wash uh, on top of this sh the, the lower part of the white shape to, to suggest that it's a reflection and not the the actual snow itself. I need to differentiate those two somewhat. I've thoroughly dried my paper once again with a hair dryer and now I'm going to take my pickup eraser and I'm going to lift off the dried masking fluid which was applied earlier in the painting process. And as I do this you can see the pure white of the paper uh, is revealed. These are the areas that were protected. And the area right there is the area where I actually am going to put some rich burnt sienna tones in there to give the suggestion of the dried leaves. Now I'm going to take some of the burnt sienna tone that I have and I'm going to paint some of this area that was protected by the mask so I get the nice reflection of light coming through the the mixture that I'm putting down right now but now I'm, this is being used to give the indication of the dried leaves that are hanging on uh, a few of the the smaller uh, saplings and and uh, bushes that are in the area So the mixture that I'm applying right now is burnt sienna with a little bit of uh, just a touch of royal blue in it. And uh, I'm going to add a little bit more royal blue to the mixture here. And, and this gives the, the play of warm and cool within these leaf shapes that I'm painting. I'm 
I'm going to carry this uh, tone over on the other side of the tree so you have the feeling of uh, overlap and it starts to build another layer into the composition. Here I'm going to take some of the burnt sienna and take it higher up in the trees. You have a few leaves that are hanging on up there, or, uh, a little bit of a wash just to suggest some, some distant um, trees that are farther back. I'm going to make some uh, brush marks around these saplings just to carry this tone across the composition and give the indication of some some leaves that are hanging on um, the uh, the twigs and the little branches that are they're sticking up from the ground once again I've inserted the reference photo is in the top right corner if you recall at the beginning I didn't want to have the, the ground covered with the wet leaves. That was one of the areas that I wanted to make an adjustment and leave out of my painting. So I've left it snow cover, but in order to provide a little bit more interest, I'm going to place some shadows here by the trees. And keep in mind, when you're painting shadows, they, they follow the contour of the land. They're not just a straight line. The land is irregular, and the shadows follow that contour. Uh, this is a mixture of uh, cerulean blue with some uh, raw sienna in it. I'm going to take some of this uh, mixture and place it in a few other areas around my composition, suggesting shadows and just suggesting a few shadowed areas on the, the snow just with a, a roll of the land. Not much, just, just just a hint that there could be a shadow in a few of these places or a, a change in the overall lighting. And I'm going to do the same here right on the shoreline where that snow hits the, the edge of the lake. I'm going to make a, one last adjustment here on the values uh, that I have on these trees that are just behind this the the larger one in the foreground I want to put a little darker value on there just to make it feel that there's a difference in, in where these these sit as far as foreground middle ground and background so I'm making these uh, few trees here that are set back behind this front tree a little bit darker just to help differentiate the replacement in the composition. It's just a, this is a mixture of raw umber and royal blue. And I'm going to take this half inch brush and I'm just going to take the edge of it and just touch the, the back side of this tree back here just to make it a little bit more in shadowed and a little darker. And that's my painting, Kendall Lake Winter. I hope you enjoyed this and want to give this or a similar painting a try. Don't forget to like it, comment, and share it with others so they can enjoy it. If you haven't already, check out my Facebook group, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor, friends and subscribers. And if you have questions about my materials, you can always go to the studio page of my website, rsorwitzart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrsorwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.